Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, back on track. Is the Red Raider football program there? And if not, what's it got to look like for that to be the case? Up ahead on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Great to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making us your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Spent some time with you yesterday talking expectations for the 2023 season. Check out that episode if you missed it. We talked hype. We talked winning conference record, so on and so forth. And today, somewhat, Chris, will be in the same vein, but I think maybe a little bit bigger picture view, more so from a program level as we take a step back and we discuss what it will actually look like when you consider Texas Tech to be back on track. And I don't know how you feel about this, Chris, but personally, I don't feel like Tech has been on track since Mike Leach left campus. I know that's kind of hard to digest, but to me, on track, is some consistency in your level of production, stacking up successful seasons. They don't all have to be like, hey, nine or ten winners or you're contending for conference titles, but at minimum they're all bowl game seasons and probably mixing in a few beyond that uh, here or there. Again, kind of what we got used to within the Leach era. I just don't think you've established anything consistently enough since that time for me personally really to feel like, all right, this is a program on track. Now, as we turn to the Joey McGuire era, we see obviously some things being stacked from an offseason standpoint. Some recruiting successes have been stacked to a degree now in a short period of time. But you've only got one season. It was a really fun season. You beat opponents your fan base cares about. You have a winning record at the end of it all. Eight and five, bowl win over an SEC opponent. uh, And you're winning a handful straight to close out the year. You guys know what the resume looks like. But I would guess, Chris, not many are saying, yep, that gets us back on track. Maybe you're close to the track, and maybe some will disagree. But what it actually looks like, I think, starts with consistent, sustained success. How do you define this kind of thing? Where are they right now? And what do you think it does actually look like uh, when you have that feeling that, yes, this is a program on track, headed in the right direction? You know, there's jokes about, you know, Texas, uh, they back, you know, and everybody <laughs> sometimes is premature with it or, but it's always a conversation. And um, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, Oklahoma, you know, coming off of a six win season last year and below 500, you know, I don't know if the conversation will there will be like, man, can they get, can they get back into the league, uh, the league title game uh, conversation? But for Texas Tech, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you have what 15 wins over the last two seasons uh you know then and, and two years ago obviously there was there was multiple head coaches uh because of Matt Wells and and then Sonny Cumbie and then obviously last year with Joey's first year with with eight wins but it, it, it's pretty lean uh in, in in many years before that yeah you had an eight win season in 2013 but you know to to be I mean, because we, we talked about like Oklahoma State's run of – they are the model of consistency. I mean, like shockingly so. That's tough to say, by the way, because once upon a time, uh, we were that. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, like in the – you know, in, in most of Spike's years and then, and then you know, Mike, Mike uh, when he was the coach, I mean, it, it was – because the conversation, I remember when that was when I first started doing radio, it was – you're going to bowl games, but it just wasn't quite enough. People were ready for the next, you know, the next step, the next tier to move up. Like, okay, I'm tired of winning seven or eight or nine even, and I'm, I'm ready to, to, to get, you know, I remember taking many phone calls back in the day and it's like, okay, I'm tired of this, man. Like we can't, you know, we can't win the, the one big one to, to get you in, into the big 12 title game, or you can't win the South or whatever it was back then. And people just kind of got bored with it. And then obviously, in the middle uh, 2010s, we look back and go, God, I miss those days. Uh, you know, I, I miss those days a whole lot. So, uh, yeah, you just don't ever take that kind of stuff for granted. But, you know, this this particular season, Cowan, 
you know, what if you uh, what if you go seven and five? Is that a is that a step back with where you're pro- like based on the hype, projections, talent level, age, last year's record? You know, without knowing how you got to seven and five. Yeah. I mean, again, if you're if you you're starting your fourth string quarterback for ten games, that then then all bets are off as far as the conversation. But sh- short of some just catastrophic event if, if you if you just go seven and five and just aren't quite as good as as you think you were but still winning record still would be, be a bowl game things like that you know what's what's that look like what's that look like a year from now when we're sitting here having this conversation I, I kind of have to believe that that's on track to me. Sustaining some success. I hope I've hammered it enough this offseason. Just a personal expectation. I want you to to maintain the standard of where you were a season ago. I said that with the conference record yesterday. I would love some huge giant step in the next direction, but uh, I'm trying to pace myself as a Red Raider fan. And not all seven and fives are created equally, as, as you're kind of alluding to there. I mean, I'm thinking like, how do we feel about seven and five last season? If you don't beat Texas, you don't beat OU. You beat NC exactly. State and Baylor or something like that, some other different combination. You're still at the end of the year like, hey, that was all right. You know, head above water, you're winning first year. But it's those – I mean, Mike Leach made more hay in this category than anyone, at least in my time watching Tech football. The the special thing about college sports, particularly college football, if you beat an opponent, your fan base cares about beating, uh, it makes a seven or eight win season feel like a niner sometimes. So, I mean, that that's just an advantage you don't have sometimes on, on other levels. But um, I, I want a standard maintained. You're not setting the world on fire again at seven and five, but I'd like to see this – the success that you've had sustained and kind of proven that ah, it wasn't just overachieving. Statistically, it would it look like that from a season ago, and we'll actually get into that on an upcoming show. Uh, maybe overachieving to a degree last year. Can you do it again? But sustaining success is the most important thing to me. So I, I'd tell you, you're on the track. I think if you do exactly what you did a season ago, really. Yeah, you know, I. Uh... That's that's a question. I guess it's impossible for us to answer for the like the public. You know, I, I wonder what the general consensus would be. And again, yeah. it's about how you start. It's about how you finish. It's about what it looks like. There's a, there's a lot of context there. But I I uh, I don't know. I don't know if I feel like that a seven win season based on what you what I think you have anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, all things being, if I would say, look, I'm not going to be mad at it and like be just, just total meltdown city. Don't get me wrong, but it, what would it, would it be like still trending up? Like, would you be, yeah, it, it, it is yeah. sustained success. I think there's no doubt about what you're saying. And like, this needs to be the norm or, or the, the floor, you know, yeah. like you, you need to be hitting these measurables, you know, like the, the eight and seven one seasons at least. Okay. And then it's, but, and and let's live there for a while. And then, but, you know, I think what we're kind of conversating about here is that kind of want to kind of want to skip maybe to that, that next step uh, uh, (laughs) pretty quickly. And again, part of this is because you look at what you have on your team this particular year and you have a lot of experience and, and next year's team, it's not going to quite be that because you've got six year guys uh, on your team, multiple, multiple starters on defense, uh, a quarterback that's been around the block uh, a lot and is a, is a, you know, a mature experienced guy. So uh, some of these offensive linemen are in the same boat uh, that have taken advantage of some of these extra years. So that's why I kind of, and, and this is a, a unique situation. You know, you've never really had a situation like this in, in, in any year in program history because there's not the COVID stuff. And then you mix that with the portal stuff and it, it just kind of a, a perfect storm. And so that's why maybe I kind of, I, I guess is the right way to phrase it. I'm going to grade on a curve, but I, I do, I think, expect them to kind of take a next step this year. And it's, look, I think you could go eight and four in the regular season. And I think I have a very meaningful, relevant season, fall short of what you really wanted to achieve. 
and still have taken a, a step up. Again, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but boy, I agree. I, I, I think anything more than eight in the regular season. Uh, so you, you win nine or more. And then I think everybody's going to say, man, I, I can't, I, there, I can't hate it. I can't. I will be on Broadway turning over a Toyota Scion <laughs> if you win nine games in the regular season. Chris, that, I expect you to be there with me. Isn't that where they li- they lit those lime scooters on fire? Was and that- a Toyota yeah. Scion, literally. Yeah, I, I know the guy whose car got turned over. Uh, he's a resident <laughs> of the Land of Enchantment from New Mexico. Started a GoFundMe afterwards, and some of the people that knew him were like, bro, that's a Toyota Scion. And you're wanting $35,000. <laughs> that's a whole other story, but yeah, nine wins. That's party time, dude. Regular season nine wins. Are you kidding me? That was after uh, you beat uh, Michigan State in the Final Four, yes? That's right, yes. Okay, yes. So I was sitting there at uh, in the hotel in Minneapolis and uh, the next morning, and Mayor Pope, uh, Mayor Dan Pope at the time, happened to be with the team around, and everybody's kind of showing video, and he he's just kind of like, you know, like, oh, man, they, these – these these young people that hits different I, with the mayor, I guess. I hadn't thought uh, about that. Like, man, check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, like, he's, wow. he's like, the this is, like, wow, this is what we dealt with, you know, that kind of deal. <laughs> but Dan's a great dude, and yeah, but that, that was my uh, and I, I'm just sitting here, kind of like not much sleep, and you're still trying to process the night before, and you're like, let's play for a national championship. Uh, the very next night. But anyways, yeah, I, I like the reference, man. I dig it. <laughs> Nine wins in the regular season. Yeah. Lego. We'll meet you right down there on Broadway. Once again, we're bathing in the fountain possibly this time around. You tell us. That's what we got the comment section for. What will it look like uh, for Texas Tech to be back on track as a football program? Maybe you feel like they're already there. I don't know. Let us know. Agree or disagree or how you define it there in the YouTube comments. We'd appreciate it. Coming up ahead it's wednesday we are word associating with a couple of names you see there on the screen we're getting to football we're getting to basketball next on locked on texas tech but first today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, america's number one sports book and the official sports book of locked on and right now is the perfect time to take your first swing and bet with FanDuel because you could get 10 times your first bet amount back in bonus bets up to 200 bucks. That's right. Just bet 20 and you're landing $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend betting everything from the money line over unders or anything in between, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. Download it today in the App Store or head on over to fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. And of course, when you're a winner with FanDuel, you're getting paid instantly. Just one of the many reasons why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on and start the fun today with FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Glad to have you along for the ride on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. With Chris, I'm Casey. We are talking football to begin our Word Association Wednesday experience. This was the name uh, that you brought to the forefront maybe, I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. We talked about this. Uh, Chris, I've been keeping an eye on it, but the name is AJ McCarty, now former Baylor defensive back um, that certainly has gotten some attention as far as his services being offered elsewhere. Clearly, as a Tech fan, you're thinking about the connection there with your staff and some prior history. So it's been an interesting one to follow. But what is on your mind today, Chris, as we uh, speak the name A.J. McCarty? Well, he's a name I don't want people to forget about. You know, we hadn't talked about him in a in a bit. Uh, we've been focused on recruiting and Micah Hudson, and you know, maybe realignment, and you know, I, I don't know. Summer vacations. Uh, you, you're 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 going to the store to buy your your hot dogs and apple pie, whatever you got going for July Fourth. Uh, you know, coming up and all that stuff. <laughs> but AJ McCarty. So my word here is, you know, impact. And I guess I would use the other word is immediate. And I have a, a variety of ways that I could spin that term. But, you know, he, he's somebody that is no longer at Baylor. 
Um, this is a, a player that has a prior relationship with a lot of the folks that are on Texas Tech's coaching staff. I think they were part of his recruiting process originally when some of those individuals were at Baylor when Joey was there and Matt Rule was still the head coach. And um, I think that all signs point to him, you know, be, being a Red Raider sooner than later. And I think that the question is, this is why, why I use the word immediate. Because I think there's, you know, I, I don't know all the dynamics here, but I think there's some question of whether he'll be immediately eligible or not. That doesn't change Texas Tech, Texas Tech stance in one bit. They want this player because I think he's got two years left to play. It, 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 whether it's this year and next year, or he has to sit out, he would still have two years to go. Okay, but I think yeah, you're. And so, th- because if he's immediately eligible, the impact that he will have is I think this is a player that's good enough. And hear what I'm saying to you right now, Airman. Now. Yeah, he's good enough to start somewhere for you right now. He's going to be very difficult to mm. keep off the the field. So you, you you know, so if 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 you get if you get him here, which I expect, and you get him immediately eligible, not sure what happens there. You know, think about how different your your secondary is when you've added Braylon Lux and then potentially AJ McCarty because AJ McCarty most people tell you was going to start for Baylor this year or in line to start. Doesn't no guarantees. And Braylon Lux was going to be a starter uh, at Fresno State this year. So you potentially have added two other starters to your team, and you may not have enough starting positions, but you get you get what I'm saying, in that you've really beefed up, I think, what you're what you're looking to do in the secondary. So um and and a, a, by all accounts, AJ's a great kid. Uh, I don't know what happened at Baylor and what caused his exit there, but everybody here very clearly feels very comfortable with him as a as a person and certainly as a player uh listed as a red shirt junior is what i've seen so like you're talking about a couple of seasons to maybe uh feel his impact on the field that would be fantastic and i'm changing my word on the fly because of what you just said i didn't know we were gonna sit here talking about anticipating uh mccarty that clearly to be a red raider but now my new word is coming in yeah <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> how do you hey, count how do you spell that <laughs> it'll be in the transcript if you watch with closed captions okay. on youtube let us know how they spell that because yeah. I, I don't know but it'll Very be nice. in the transcript so we'll check it out then <clears throat> all right <clears throat> <clears throat> we're getting to the hardwood coming up next and we've got a few names to discuss both on the floor and on the sideline next on locked on texas tech To be with you again on Locked On at Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network with Chris. I'm Casey coming to you from west of the 100th Meridian where it's really going down. Supposed to be a cold front coming through today. I think only 101 as compared to 108. So bundle up, kids. You don't want to catch pneumonia. Watch your temperature. All right, Chris, uh, before we're out of here, we're hitting the hardwood. Let's begin with the name there on the screen. We've actually got a trio uh, to mention here in a variety of ways, as a matter of fact, we'll talk about some guys that are on the court and we'll talk about this guy, not on the court, but impacting things. The name Dave Smart, which is not a name that I knew prior to this week. So tell us about Mr. Smart and why are we bringing him up today? Well, he's yeah, he's not a name that most people are going to really know. I think he's been involved uh, up in Canada Uh He's got a uh, really, you know, he, I think it's like small college up in uh, up in Canada. He's, I think, also involved, been involved with the Canadian national team at some level. And uh, but you know, he he's uh, mid to late fifties. Uh, but this is, I think, going to be somebody that is an associate head coach type. I can't tell you, begin to tell you what his title will actually be. But I, I believe that if, if he's like a lead assistant or whether he's like an on campus, like that fourth assistant, which they've created these new roles where like, you know, you've got you can have a fourth and fifth uh, assistant that just can be on the floor. They can coach and they can do a variety of different things basketball wise and game plan and all this stuff. They're just like 
of your five assistants, they're the fourth and the fifth guys are not allowed to get on the road and go recruit. So I don't know which, mm. if he's number one or number four, kind of if that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I believe uh, he's been here. Uh, I think that they're they're waiting on uh, like work visa type stuff uh, to get him uh, here in full time. I believe he's already got um, knows where he's going to live and and kind of started the, the process of. Uh, of everything like that, like I think that's pretty much done deal on uh, on on him. I just don't know title or, or whatever as far as Grant staff. So that can because it it just appears Ben McCollum is is now on the outside. He's not is not going to be a part of this deal as much as we mentioned his name and 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 all that. Uh, it, it appears that uh, Dave Smart and then uh, a young man by the name of Luke Barnwell will will be here and it and, and, and arriving at different times. And then there's a a third uh, member to the staff that will join, I think, in in uh, early August. It's got some, you know, different commitments between now and then, and all that stuff. But yeah, it's kind of at least that's how it kind of all points to now. Okay. Uh, so that that kind of puts uh, puts your staff, uh, you know, mostly intact. Again, not all here, not all official yet, not all. But boy, it, it a lot, lot pointing that way. So uh, th- those people that are wondering about that can kind of stop uh, or or kind of yeah. get a good feel for it now. How do I say goodbye to Ben McCollum? A Boys guy I to, never knew before. Boys to men. How do we say goodbye to a guy we never knew? Yeah. <laughs> Only I, in our minds and on podcast conversation. It's wild, man. Yeah, wild. like Mark, Mark Adams tried to hire him two years ago. And then this whole deal this year has just been, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, He's like I a mythical creature. I agree, totally. <laughs> yeah. All right, best of luck, Ben. Let's get on the floor. We had a little bit of an adjustment as far as scheduling for a guy we discussed uh, already a few days ago, Joe Toussaint. Uh, a West Virginia transfer, I guess, potentially. I don't know if he's ruled out going back to West Virginia, but either way, he is uh, taking interviews <laughs> for those who are seeking his services. And a visit to Manhattan. Check out K-State. A visit to Texas Tech in the works this week. But did we have a schedule swap or yeah. what's actually wound up uh, to be the case here? Yeah, and, and, and the first thing is that you're only even talking about him because – Deshaun Jackson is no longer, you know, a part of, of your situation. You know, we, we did a whole podcast on him uh, a couple weeks ago, but he, I think there's a, there's a medical issue there. If I'm being uh, honest, based on what I've heard and it just, I think the people at Texas tech weren't real comfortable with it. And so I think the folks at Charlotte uh, must be. And so that, you know, but I think you're trying to do due diligence. You were trying to find a player that you had recruited or known for, for many, many years and he would have fit what you needed, but I think there was some concern, and so I think that you you wish him well. But I, I can't, I don't know exact details or anything like that. I just think that based on him sitting out uh, a year ago due to a a medical issue, I think that that issue is still is still somewhat prevalent. Obviously, man. So if if that didn't go down that way, you wouldn't even have entered the Tucson conversation. I, I think you'd be full. Yeah, that I think is that, interesting. And so that's why. That's why we're having this conversation right now about mm-hmm. Joe Toussaint or really anybody else that you, you know, that you you were able to consider. But as far as Joe Toussaint goes, uh, this is a guy that I think that Texas Tech would really like to have. Yes, I think other schools would like to have him, too. You know, the it, it was originally like Texas Tech, Kansas State. Then it turned into Texas Tech, Kansas State, West Virginia would return. And then it 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 kind of uh, ended up being now you're hearing like hey one day trip to Bama I may do a Zoom call with Gonzaga Miami you know mm-hmm. so again here's what you've got you've got very few options out there in the portal these are new in- entries into the portal I think they are immediately eligible. Uh, even though they are, they have entered after the window just simply because of the, this this head coach situation. So it's it's waiver worthy, and and it and I think there's no issue there. They would be eligible to play. You know, Trey Mitchell already left West Virginia. He's going to Kentucky. Uh, they had two more wings or big guys that that have bailed out or in the portal, I should say, uh, but West Virginia as well. 
and and now Joe Toussaint. And and what he is is make no mistake. I, you know, this is as brutally honest as I can be. He is a backup type point guard that is because I talked to people in West Virginia about him. Uh, you know, over the last day or two. And they will tell you several things that, look, if he leaves us, it's going to hurt, you know, but he's a New York kid. He's very mature. There's no drama, uh, but he's not, he's not a 25 point a game guy or a 17 point a game. He's a tough, you know, can get you about 10 a game on average. Now he did come to Lubbock last year and drop 22 on you. Uh, but I, yeah, I, yeah. And, and he's only six foot, you know, I mean, we, we talked about that last year with, with pop and Davion Harmon and how it, you know, he's comfortable in our building. We know that. Yeah, that's right. It, you know how many, I'd ask him how many points you scored at Gonzaga or at Alabama. <laughs> I don't know what that's you true. did at, at K state, but yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's really interesting, man. And you'd take that. I, I just, the points you're talking about nice, if you can get a double digit score or something, but, uh, uh, a high character guy, guy that can blend in nicely and maybe even be a bit of a, a standard bearer in the locker room. I don't know why I'm so hung up on that this offseason. I, I just really I want to see some of those guys come across, Chris, because some of the returners you have, I'm just wondering, like, all right, are you are you gonna be that guy yet? Can you can you be that dude yet? So I, I'm just wondering where that kind of thing comes from. We've touched on it like with Cambridge and some of these others that are really seasoned as college basketball players, but uh, maybe Tucson could be something similar. I think he's somebody that can help you and help you right away. I think he adds maturity. and t- I love the older guys, man, especially ones that aren't going to screw up chemistry. I asked multiple people uh, that I know up in Morgantown about him. They're like, man, he's quiet. He's respectful. He plays hard. He's a Bronx kid, uh, you know, and he, he just – he didn't like the situation up here. It is uneasy about, you know, which is totally understandable. Sure. And he's trying to make the most of his last year of, of college basketball. And so I'd love to be that landing spot because if it, my, I, my guess is if you don't, if you don't land him, you will see him maybe more than once on your schedule next year, whether he does return to West Virginia Ooh. or, or at Kansas state. And most people are, are the, the West Virginia folks I talked to were like, it, it's, it's a bit tricky because you only name the interim you know, Huggins assistant, you only name the interim to keep everybody there. That's kind of right. what the goal is. And then as soon as you do it, you're now at last check. You are at three in the portal. One is committed to Kentucky. And one one player did get in the portal and then b- backed out of it. Uh, Kerr Quisa, I think is how you say it. He's the point guard from Arizona. He, yes. he, uh, he is, you know, boomeranged back. And so he's, he's staying there. But – it wasn't exactly stability uh, based on you know, <laughs> no. his name in the interim head coach. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I looked it up. He scored five at K-State, man. You can't score in that building. Everybody <laughs> knows that. 22 here in Lubbock, big boy. Come on back. Come on back. He's already here, so I guess he has come back. Stay here is what we should say. By the way, I saw the announcement of West Virginia's interim head coach, like uh, the glamour shot they took of the guy in front of the arena or inside the arena, like in front of the big board. You know, like, hey, here's our guy. I thought it was hilarious that the word interim was in, like, 500 size font. His name was in, like, two. Could you make interim any bigger? You would think his name was interim. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That'll be a prized possession of his, I'm sure, for many, many years. Okay, there's some interesting stuff to chew on uh, within this conversation, no doubt about it. And hopefully, like with some others, we got some good news to talk about as far as some basketball success on the recruiting trail when you've gotten to campus gotten them to campus you've had some good success as far as getting them to become a member of your program so far hopefully that continues here stick with us to find out we'll be here for the latest whenever it goes one way or another subscribe on youtube so you never miss an episode and hope you'll join us once again coming up tomorrow for another edition of locked on texas tech chris enjoyed the time today as always man see you then yeah, man, and football season is coming uh, coming soon, man. So if you want to be a, a sponsor on this lovely uh, show that you call Locked On Texas Tech, Mr. Cowan, we, we'd love to have you. I know that you would echo those sentiments. I would echo those sentiments very, very loudly, almost like the Rico Live guy. Advertising! <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to Something keep this thing way. going, man. That's right. Let's roll. We'll be back tomorrow to do it all over again. We hope to see you then on Locked On Texas Tech. <laughs>